So over the course of the past three and a half years that I've been on YouTube, I have been incredibly lucky in terms of not having save file issues. I haven't had any corrupted files. I've dodged a lot of bullets that a lot of people aren't as fortunate to dodge. That said, as you could probably tell by the title, what you're looking at on screen right now, my tone and demeanor, uh, we have not dodged a bullet on this occasion. For whatever reason, the last episode's worth of progress has not saved, or the file has outright disappeared, leaving me with the option of redoing the last episode, so going all the way through the year one draft again, and getting up to the year two draft, or I ditch offline saves and go back to a cloud save, which I had for the Bills series and had no issues, so I can go back to the cloud save and we start over, at the end of this episode would be, hey, here's who we could draft in year one. And that is the option I'm going to take, because if I've already had an issue with the offline save file so early on, I'm going to scramble back to my safety net of cloud franchise. So if this kind of ruins it for you, because we're not going to be able to see how Brewer, Rush, and Von Holmes develop... Uh, for the record, we would have taken Henry Huff with the number one pick in the year two draft. If this ruins it for you, I get it because it's, yeah, obviously it's frustrating. It sucks. And I don't think anyone's happy over this. No one's more upset about this than I am. Trust me. But on the bright side, I guess if there had to have been an issue, I'm glad it happened early on to the point where we only made it through one draft. So as far as what's happening now, like I said, view this as a refresh. We're going to be going back through the year one draft. I'll say this, at the very least, you can view those first two episodes as the tester for you. You know, you can find out, like, oh, okay, this is the type of series that, uh, this is the type of series that I'm going to enjoy, so I'm going to stick with this. Or, again, maybe you were on the fence and maybe this refresh that I'm having to do kind of ruins it for you. And if that's the case, I absolutely understand, right? It's all good. I get it. No problem. But yeah, we are having to restart. So that is what this episode is going to be. It's going to be a much shorter episode. And if anything, I think I'm just going to you know, save some time. I'm going to get everything set up the way it was set up. We're going to get the roster set up for year one as you know, close to being as set up as it could be. We're going to go 0-16, more than likely. And we'll end this episode with the look at the prospects in the first year draft, the draft stories. Of course, it's going to be random. I'm not going to use uh, a draft class. We're just going to have it be computer generated. And we'll leave the episode the same way we left the end of the first episode with you guys having the option for who we're going to take with that number one pick. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes. I don't think I'm going to do a full season recap. Uh, again, we don't have any players that I'm invested in, so it's fine. I mean, I'll show you guys who wins the Super Bowl and awards, I guess. But aside from that, uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward as far as this episode is concerned. Again, uh, it sucks that this happened, but we're going to try to make the most of it. We're going to try to get back on track and hopefully get back right to where we were, uh, where this episode should have been with the year two draft uh, relatively quickly. So I'll talk to you guys in a few minutes. Alright, so just to give you a quick update here, of course, a look at the team, 39 overall, again, everything is set up exactly the same way as it was before, I have no reason to change it, and again, on the bright side at least, the sim times will be faster, so I got that going for us, I mean, aside from the fact that uh, Torgerson's now our quarterback instead of uh, Lunt, but yeah, we're pretty much good to go. <laughs> Again, I'll probably jump cut because all we're going to do is go through the season. I'll upgrade players if they're upgrade worthy, even though I'm just going to hit Y because they're not our players and it doesn't matter. But maybe we end up being the, you know, we end up giving an opportunity to somebody. Maybe someone gets on the practice squad. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> it's just so frustrating. I'm going to go up to the point at least live. And I don't know, maybe I'll stay live with the whole thing, but... That's the one thing that sucks, is there's nothing for me to really talk about right now, aside from the fact that, yeah, this is a shitty situation, and obviously I wanted to see how those players developed, but what are you going to do, right? Like I said, to view the positives out of it, at the very least, uh, we now get faster sim times, so that's good. Uh, again, note to self, for me at least, 
always use cloud save franchise for YouTube. I've, I've learned now. Thurston Armbrister. Armbrister. It's a hell of a name. The good thing is we're already here. Uh, so we are going to auto-generate our rookies. We're going to start off scouting quarterbacks as we did before. Again, it's a damn shame that the names are gone. Don't make me spend scouting points on this guy, even though I'm probably going to. Oh my god, the tutorial shit. Stop it. Stop it. This is painful enough. I don't need this shit. Stop it. Thank you. Tucker Larson, congratulations. I'll talk to you guys at the end of the season, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. So hilariously enough, we actually won a game this year. We finished 1 and 15. Not sure how we pulled that off. Actually, I am. It was a victory, I believe, in week seven, week five, against the 49ers. So congratulations to San Francisco. You absolutely blew it against a 43 overall team. Again, not fantasy draft. We just drop every regular Cardinal to the free agent list. So they had no excuse. They finished at 6 and 10 on the year. Now, one thing I want to do before showing you the playoff structure and the awards and everything is Tom Brady is NFL MVP. I want to take a look at the draft stories again because I have been paying attention to this. And every single person's name I already have on the list outside of Vasti Gaylor. So I have everybody marked down from this year in the draft stories, unlike in the first year where I kind of dropped the ball on that. So we do have that going for us. That said, let's take a look at the playoff structure, the playoff schedule, before we get into the awards. It is going to be Raiders, Chargers, Cowboys, Eagles, Jets, Colts, Seahawks, and Rams. And the wild card, as far as who else made it, we'll find out soon, won't we? Let's take a look at the awards. As we already know, Tom Brady, NFL MVP, Coach of the Year, went to Mike Tomlin. And as far as these awards are concerned... Uh, we know from the first uh, attempt of this, the very first season we simmed through, uh, that it wouldn't be shocking if any of our players actually ended up winning awards. So I'm just going to breeze through this. If one of our players wins an award, that would be absolutely hilarious. Chris Jones, Defensive Rookie of the Year. There you go. So, yeah, I'm not going to make too big of a deal of it. I am using the most recent update. Kareem Hunt's still on the free agent list. I was going to lower the overall. To be honest, I checked the free agent list, didn't see him, but then when I loaded in franchise, I'm like, oh, fuck, he's on the free agent list. So he's in. Regardless, it is what it is. I'm not too concerned. By the time we're good, he's going to be regressing, more than likely. So with all of that, we are good to move forward. We'll see what happens here playoff-wise. As I'm going to sim straight to the Super Bowl, we'll take a look at each team's road to how they got there, and we'll be good to go. So Super Bowl in year one is Pittsburgh and New Orleans. New Orleans, which could actually happen. I suppose I could actually see that happening in real life. I mean, granted, Steelers just beat the Patriots in the uh, past week, but, you know, I don't know. That's funny, though, because, you know, the Saints this season, it's like, oh, my God, they're cruising, and then they kind of have their weaknesses. Still... Point is, if you were to tell me that was going to be the Super Bowl, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a quick scroll through the Pro Bowl roster. Let's take a look here, shall we, at how each team managed to get there. I hate that they flip it. I fall for it every time. League schedule. There we go. Let's take a look. So it was Chargers over the Raiders. Cowboys beat the Eagles. Colts beat the Jets. The Rams beat the Seahawks. In the divisional matchups, we had the Steelers over the Colts. The Saints over the Cowboys, Patriots over the Chargers, and Packers over the Rams. And then the Steelers beat the Patriots by four. New Orleans 34-28 over Green Bay, hence a Steelers-Saints Super Bowl. One more look here at draft stories, just in case. Just in case. Okay, cool. So we know that Gaylor was the Heisman winner. We know that we're going to have the number one pick. That's not going to be surprising. Of course, last time we didn't take the Heisman winner. Uh, things were... You know, things went a little bit interesting for that. So he is a middle linebacker, for the record, uh, which we are actually currently still scouting out linebackers. He's actually the last one we have to take a look at. Here's the thing. He is listed as a third-round talent despite winning the Heisman. So maybe if he's there in the third round, but I don't think we're taking him in the first. I think we have to trust our scout on that one. That's going to be interesting. 
the Heisman winner showing up as a third round projection as I'm just going to scout up here to the fifth round not going to bother with the seventh rounds and unfortunately I can't fire our scout at this point so we are going to have to use the extra points to try and scout out the secondary that might be the one spot where we slip up a little bit I'm going to go Saints over the Steelers here is that going to be the case it is 24 21 is the final score there. So the Saints win the Super Bowl in year one as uh, opposed to the Cowboys, who won it the first time we simmed this first season. We will get over this eventually. <laughs> but for now, it's still a fresh wound, damn it. It still hurts that we have to do all this all over again. Don't be sure. Don't. Don't. Stop it. Stop it with your tutorials. Stop it. All right, let's see. Let's just sit here and spam the button. Oh, Zach Doss. By the way, there are some great names in this draft. We could end up with some tremendous talent who have even better names, to be honest. Let's advance to the third week again. I'll show you all the free agents that end up signing. We'll take care of that as well. And we are going to be ending this episode where we left it the first time, right before the draft. You guys will be able to more than likely vote. I think I'll set it up as a poll this time, uh, where you guys will be able to vote on who we're going to uh, who we're going to be drafting, as there's a decent chance I might end up taking both kicker and punter in this draft if it makes sense to, just to get that out of the way. Uh, so right now we're going to continue to try and scout out the best second round talent available. We don't have that much scouting time left, unfortunately. So the secondary is going to take a little bit of a hit in terms of who we're going to have available to us. So. Keep that in mind. Might not have been the best way to go about it, as I'm going to try to scout out all second-round talents at the very least, which means we have three more safeties to attend to. As we have a barking dog. Gotta love barking dogs. I'm not going to make a jump cut. Enjoy the sound of a barking dog. Okay, I have to make a jump cut now. Damn it. All right, the joys of a barking dog might not be over. Uh, it did snow this morning, so nothing but people out on the streets trying to clean up. So yeah, she doesn't she doesn't like people approaching windows, which they kind of have to when you're doing street cleanup and shit like that. So yeah, she might start barking again. There might be a lot of jump cuts in the last half of this episode. Uh, although we're pretty much at the end, thankfully. So let's take a look at the league signings. David Johnson to the Rams. Devin Coleman signs, Mark Ingram, as we'll just go down the list. Marshawn Lynch to the Ravens. We'll go down until we hit about the 80 overalls. We're only going to care about the high level talent for now. So that is that. Let's start the draft, shall we? What I'm going to do is, again, as we have the number one pick, I'm going to pause the draft. I'll be back in a second. I'm going to get the draft board set up. And I'll give you guys a look at the top talent that you can vote on for who our number one pick's going to be. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's take a look at the players available to us. Starting off with quarterbacks, we have Tucker Larson, who is an early first-round projection at 24 years old. Ross Schobel, another early first-round projection at 21 years old, maybe a franchise quarterback there. Russell Hape. Mid-first-round projection, uh, projection, 22-year-old scrambler. And we also have Wade Blanchard projected for a late first round. So there is a chance either of these or you know any of these guys could fall. Another thing to keep in mind, though, this second-round projection guy right here, Turner Dugan, was one of the draft story players. So it might be worth avoiding one of these four quarterbacks with the first pick just in general, but especially knowing that Dugan might be able to be picked up in the second or maybe even the third round. So keep that in mind. There are some other quarterbacks there towards the end too who I don't think we'll go after, but at least for the quarterback situation, it is interesting. Running back-wise, only one first-round projection, that being Jamon Hughes, the 21-year-old receiving back, who does look pretty good, but with a late first-round projection, so not quite uh, who we would have had in the first run. There are some other running backs, Savian Hall as well. Uh, that we could look to get later on rather than Hughes if he doesn't fall. Fullback-wise, I mean, Harrison Hicks we're not going to look to take early on. Two wide receivers. Reginald Boone is a draft stories player. 6'5", at 21 years old. Solid jumping, decent speed and agility. 
he could be a franchise wide out for us. There is also J.J. Carr, who's a mid-first round projection. A lot of height, decent jumping, but the speed and agility, not quite there. So if we're going to take a quarter or a wide receiver number one, I should say, it's going to be Reginald Boone. There's also Adonis Steed, the only tight end who's actually worth it in terms of first round projection. He is also a draft stories player, but I don't think we're going to take a tight end with the number one pick, but you never know. He could be, uh, you know, full health Gronkowski-esque, perhaps. Now, the big difference between the first run of this and now is that the offensive line is not nearly as strong as it was in the previous attempts as... I'm leaving that part in. I'm not perfect. And also, I'm freaking out that the dog's going to bark at somebody again. Uh, that's it. And I'm frustrated. Uh, we get to center. There are three options here. We have Cy Hansen, mid-first round talent. Fairly well-rounded for a 21-year-old. We also have Sean Meadows, whose strength is a little bit down. But then the interesting one is Reed Redding, who is a draft stories player, 39 reps on the bench press and agile. I said the offensive line talent wasn't quite as plentiful, but Reed Redding, despite being a late first round projection, could be an amazing first round pickup. Is he first overall worthy though? That's the question. Maybe he falls to the second round, but aside from those three, we also have Terrence Perkins at right tackle with 42 reps on the bench press at 22 years old. So two options on the O-line who could absolutely be worth it. It's just whether or not we hope they fall to the second round first. But between Perkins and the draft stories focused Reed Redding, both could be worth it. Left end, we have three guys projected here in the first round. No draft story ratings for them. But we have Griffin Dane, who looks great, fast, agile, and strong. The 24-year-old's an early first round projection. We also have Solomon Collier, or Collier who fairly well-rounded again, early first-round projection, and Exil Price, the 23-year-old, uh, fairly agile, the strength not quite up to the standard of the other players. At right end, we have one first-round projection, Gervonta Hodge, who is not great. So yeah, but still, I'll put him on the list. Again, what we're going to do for this is every single first-round projected player will be on a straw poll, it will be multiple choice, and you guys will be able to vote for every player you'd be okay with me taking as a number one pick, and the top-rated person is who we take. Fairly straightforward. Defensive tackles, we have two players that are available here. Jerron Manning out of USC, 40 reps on the bench press, relatively agile, early first-round projection. He could be incredible. We also have... I guess that would be Ishaq Dunn, who, uh, the, you know, the reps on the bench press are rough, but in terms of an agile defensive tackle, maybe even switching him over to an end, he could be great early first round projection. That said, there is a draft stories player here who I didn't even scout down in the sixth round, Devin Walls out of Miami. So we could look at taking a defensive tackle later in the draft. Linebacker wise, only one option on the left hand side, Rayvon Pamphile? Pamphile. Not sure. Fast. Agile, eh, strength, mid-first round projection on him. Middle linebackers, no first round projections, but Vasti Gaylor was the uh, Heisman winner. So could be worth taking later on if he falls. On the outside, we have Bryson Hayden, the 22-year-old, who is, uh, eh, in terms of combine results, late first round projection. At corner, we have three options here. Le'Veon Cole, fast. Can, I mean, he's amazing. <laughs> Just flat out. That's all it is. He's amazing. We also have Parker McGee, who uh, not so much in terms of combine results, despite the mid-first round projection. And Andre Powers, 24 years old, decent as well. But Le'Veon Cole could be a great first round option or first overall option. At safety, we have Jerron Haynes at 5'11", has the third best vert jump in the draft, fairly well-rounded again, mid-first round projection. We have Mitch Watson, who also looks great, and Adonis Austin, great name, also looks pretty damn good. Top vert jump at 6'3", in this draft, he could be great. It's going to be a tough choice, actually. And at safety, strong safety, we have Corey Griggs, Actually, the only first-round projection, really the only half-decent player, but he's looking great. And then we have another draft stories player and Antoine McIntosh, who we actually didn't scout, but we could take a chance on later on in this draft. You have the kickers, Brandon Chandler, or kicker Brandon Chandler, with the two punters, Bruce Tootin and Nick 
McDonald. That is all the information that you need. You can vote. The poll will be in the comments down below. Again, it's just a, st a simple straw poll. Multiple choice. Vote for anybody you'd like to see me take with the number one pick. And straightforward, the highest rated player will be the person that we choose. Guys, that will do it for this one. This refresh, unfortunately. But at the very least, uh, I'm, I'm thinking this first draft could be pretty kind to us. Hopefully... Uh, you know, you guys continue to go along the journey with me. I would appreciate it, especially after, you know, the early momentum of the series was disrupted. Regardless, I'm going to end it here because I know the dog's going to start barking again shortly. Thank you for watching. Thank you for continuing to support this series, and I will see you in the next one where, again, we will go year to year. The next episode will end with the year two draft. That will be the format until this team starts to get competitive. Until next time, have a good one, and I'll see you then.